Hello again, and welcome to the Cryptonary Podcast. Uh, today we have an interesting conversation uh, for you. We're talking about intent. I have Stan with me on the show. Stan, how are you doing today? Yes, doing really well. The market is up. Things are looking good. What about you, Victor? I'm doing really good. Thanks, man. Uh, so we, we just published those reports that you wrote about intent. Um, you said it's an emerging narrative that could be a game changer for DeFi and, you know, reading through the report and seeing all the points you're making, it sounds like an exciting opportunity, especially as we're entering this uh, new bull market. But for people who are just reading this report or watching this video, and this is probably the first time that uh, they are coming across intent as, as a concept in Web3, um, can you explain to us what intent really is? Let's go to the beginning. Yeah, so um, I think what's important to understand first is how currently transactions in DeFi work. So if you are using DeFi right now and you want to make a transaction, so let's say you want to swap your ETH into Chainlink, mm -hmm. you have to make a lot of steps, right? You have to find like the DEX with the best liquidity, you have to import how much ETH you want, how much chain link you want. Yep. You have to make sure you have the right slippage. So, you know, you don't end up paying too much. I would say there are like probably five to 10 steps you have to take in the whole process to swap your ETH to link in like an easy way. So that's a transaction. And what intents basically are trying to do is turn that whole process of you setting up your wallet, opening, you know, a DAX, making the right decisions when trading into one single step where you just only state your intention. So mm. that could be like, I have one ETH. I want this amount of link for this ETH. And then the application will sort out the best way to do it for you. In the report, I kind of combine it. Uh, I kind of in the report, I kind of compare it to ordering a coffee. When you order a coffee, you don't like tell the barista like which coffee machine he <laughs> should use, which yeah. beans he exactly should use, how much milk you want. You just tell him, I want a coffee. And then the barista will try to get you the best coffee he possibly mm -hmm. can make, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of the change from transactions to intents, where instead of doing like all these actions, you just give the decentralized exchange your intention and then it will have something we call solvers to solve the problem for you in the background. Interesting. So, I mean, it all sounds technical, but at the high level, it sounds to me like intents allow users to simply declare an outcome that they want rather than having to manually configure every parameter of, of a transaction. Mm -hmm. Right, correct. Like, you explained it uh, better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let, let's see if we can simplify it for that. Is it possible if we say that intent is like having an automated assistant working in the background to execute transactions for you? Yes, yes, that's a very good way to explain. Uh, uh, okay, now that's that's interesting because you know thinking about DeFi and for people trying to get involved in DeFi transactions, especially when you com compare it to TradFi, it looks really complicated, the whole process. And that's one of the things that's been limiting adoption, so to say, uh, in that sense of the word. And now you're saying intent is a game changer because it just removes all the legwork in between. You, so you go from doing specifying transactions to just basically declaring the outcome that you want and then the solvers, as you call them, make it happen for you. Exactly. Exactly. And that's a big game changer, like, um, because this part has been like one of the main reasons why our parents and like our grandparents are using centralized exchanges or not even getting into crypto at all. And that's also why I think intents are such a big topic, you know, it's a bit close to something like AI, you know, that can suddenly, mm. you know, like make thing make the whole industry look different. Amazing. Now, let, let's talk about why now. Why, why do you think intent, it, the time is right for intent to become like the next big thing in, in DeFi and, you know, change the whole landscape? 
So yeah, you're uh, very right for asking this question because if someone in the audience has been in crypto for a while, they probably know that the topic of intents is not new, you know. We've seen intent-based blockchains before, people have experimented with it in DeFi before. But the reason why I think right now is the right time is because there's another big innovation happening on Ethereum right now called account abstraction. And what account abstraction basically does, it makes the user experience and the things a wallet can do much better. Okay. So one of the problems why intents couldn't really work was that a user can currently not give permission to someone else to, for example, make automated transactions. So that's why like no one uses crypto for monthly subscriptions, you know, <laughs> because you would have to sign the transaction every month. Every month. Mm. While with account abstraction, your wallet basically turns into something more uh, like a smart contract where you okay. can design things better. So you could, for example, say, I enable Victor to take $5 out of my wallet each month because he provides me with a service. Or, and what this does is it enables you to give permission to these solvers that are you know, using your funds to um, get you what you want. You can give them permission with account abstraction to do that for you. So basically, account abstraction is needed for intents to work as intended. And that's why I think right now is the time, because we are seeing the adoption of account abstraction on Ethereum. And by, you know, account abstraction being adopted, applications working with intents can work better and more efficiently. Uh, okay, so, so to me, it sounds like you're saying the core foundations are now in place for builders to use intents rather than having um, user specify rigid transactions and that, that that makes it all the more exciting i want to quickly touch on something before we move forward so we're talking about narrative and intents is an exciting narrative play it's an imagined narrative play and uh, you know narratives are like sometimes stories, they're high, stories that yeah. we tell ourselves so this is like the next exciting story that will be told in DeFi during the course of the next bull run and for me, that narrative, the fact that people are talking about it, the fact that everybody's excited about it means that funds, capital potentially flows into that space, which mm -hmm. is basically where the opportunity lies for investors and traders and, and, and whatnot. Now, at the fundamental level, what benefits, what real use case benefits will, will intent bring into DeFi? Why is it an exciting narrative? What practical benefits will the industry get from intents? Yeah, so I think one of the big benefits is capital efficiency. Because what basically is going to happen is that because of intents, people, their capital will be allocated more efficiently. As right now, it's very inefficient, you know. Let's say you want to make a transaction, you have to figure out yourself what the most efficient way to do it is. And that means, like, from an economic perspective, that sometimes you're allocating your capital wrongly. Maybe you are using a liquidity pool to buy something, but it's not the best pool to use. Yep. Well, if applications start implementing intents, the capital will flow to the pools that are the best to use. Mm -hmm. Essentially, like DeFi will become more like an efficient market where capital goes where it should go instead of people making a lot of these mistakes that are you know, being made by beginners that maybe yep. buy too much of a token that doesn't have enough liquidity somewhere, mm. you know? So that's like one part. Another one is that it enables cross-chain transactions because these solvers, they could also use your funds to find opportunities in places that are not on Ethereum, you know? Let's say you want to buy ETH, but maybe there's more liquidity on you know, like, let's say Arbitrum, just to give, I know it's a weird example. <laughs> Those solvers could like take your ETH to Arbitrum, do the transaction there. And this way you also enable more like cross-chain uh, communication okay. between networks. And I think it will also just improve the user experience for everyone because um, there are like a lot of these complicated tasks that could even be done. Like 
maybe you want to say like i want to lend or borrow my eve for this amount you could also build like a lending protocol that actually uses all other lending protocols to find those opportunities for you so it would be like a lending aggregator you know yeah so there are like a lot of these type of innovations that can be built and the main thing it would you know improve for the user is that he does not have to think as much anymore about what he is doing so it removes a lot of the headache people have using DeFi right now. Cool. So you're saying in incense will bring in a lot of innovations into DeFi and obviously this innovations will present a lot more opportunities. I, I like one of the key things you talked about when you talk about, you know, capital efficiency, better execution and um, enhanced user experience. And when you bring all of this together, it sounds like intense will be a major or potentially become a major uh, driver of mainstream adoption because everything you've mentioned sounds to me like it's going to make web3 crypto applications easier and more intuitive um, for users so in a way using crypto will be more like using uber or airbnb you yes. don't have to worry I, about this is that's the funny thing because these applications use the exact same type of technology like in uber you only state from where you want to where you are and where you want to go Yep. And it will figure out the best price for you. It will figure out the closest driver. It's yeah. the exact same concept. The only thing is in crypto, we were not able to adopt the same technology yet. And we're now getting to that point where we can use the same kind of approach as an Uber or an Airbnb or even like a Google do, where you only you know, type your search result. What do I want to find? And Google figures out for you what the most trustworthy page is, you know. Amazing. So no, 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 brings it, that brings it all home. But you know, we, we, so far we've been talking about the tech and how it's exciting and how it's a game changer and how it's, you know, make things better in, in crypto. But for many people who are watching this and are reading through the reports, they're probably thinking, how can I make money from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which is valid. That's why like... we're here, right? <laughs> yeah. That's so, why we're here. How can someone make money from intent? So basically in the report, I have been looking at multiple projects that have been like the early adopters of Intense because it's a new technology, you know, and you always have people taking a bit more risk, starting to implement the technology earlier. And I have basically highlighted, I think it was four of them in the report. Should we mm -hmm. go through all of them? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah, so the first one is Intent X, and what Intent X basically is, it is built on base as a perpetual exchange built on intent based technology. It sounds very complicated, I know, but what it basically means is that when you are trading on perpetuals, instead of using like a liquidity pool or like an order book like you used to, they are using those solvers in the background to, um, you know, execute your transactions. And by doing that, they estimate that they can offer like better execution. They can save gas costs for users. They can offer higher leverage than normal mm -hmm. DEXs. I think I'll have to check what the exact amount was. So yeah, they estimate that they can give up to like 50x leverage on their DEX. And one of the main things they can also do, what is very impressive, is they can offer a lot more assets because they can allow these solvers to find liquidity for assets on multiple places, you know? They yep. don't have to just look on one place. So that's one project. They don't have a token yet. It's a very early project. I think they're still on testnet. But they will be sharing revenue uh, from their DEX to token holders once their token launches. So okay. there is like an opportunity there to earn income as well. Okay. Any that, uh, questions? Uh, I'm not quite sure I have any questions on that. I mean, you, you need to read the report to really understand what this works, but I think there's an interesting uh, opportunity. One of the key things is that you mentioned that Intent X is a high risk opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. So can you, can you delve a bit into what makes it an high risk opportunity in this space? Yeah. So. Basically, why I call it high risk is because the project is a startup. It's super early. They have not even launched their full product yet. Their token is not even live. You know, their Twitter was maybe launched this year. 
So investing in it is like extremely high risk, I would say, because it's like investing in, I don't know, like a startup in the first few months when they launch. And there is a Fair risk enough. that the team might steal money. The team could, you know, the protocol could get hacked. Yeah. There are risks like this and we're not ignoring those. Yep. But this also means there is a higher reward if they turn out to become like a big application on base. And for this reason, I would only, you know, personally, if I would have to invest in this, I would use a very small amount of my portfolio, like maybe even less than 5%, you know? Fair enough. Now, you mentioned three other projects in the report. You mentioned Simio, um, CowSwap, and Thina. Uh, can, can you just run, br briefly run through all three? What's different about them? What are they doing differently? Are they leveraging incense? Yeah. And what's the risk profile like? So Simeo is one I find personally really interesting because they are not a customer a business to customer provider, but instead they do B2B. So what they do is they provide the infrastructure for other protocols to build intent based uh, applications. Now that's interesting. So let's imagine you want to build a DEX and you don't have the infrastructure to work with intents or you don't have like the technological knowledge to you know create solvers and be able to set everything up what you can do is you can use simio its infrastructure and they will handle like the intent based part of it in the back end and in exchange for that they will ask like a fee you know they'll say like mm -hmm. hey because you're using my infrastructure we want 10 so that's how they earn money. It's more like a pick and shovel play, you know, where they're yeah. selling the shovels. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then the opportunity is the, how big they could grow is actually depending on the number of companies or projects now mm -hmm. using their infrastructure. And as those ones exactly. grow, they also grow. Okay. Yeah. Now, that, so that's to me, it seems like a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, potential investment because they are like infrastructure. So if one of the projects they help wins, they win too. It's more diversified. Essentially. Uh, uh, yeah. But let's talk about the risk profile and maybe you can touch on the tokenomics for, for, for this one as well. So what does it look like? Yeah. So again, this is high risk, like uh, definitely high risk. They only launched this year. They're very early. They have already found some big partners like Tina Finance and they're also working I think with a few DEXs on Arbitrum so they have shown like some good business development already but still very high risk the token is also not fully out yet what I do like about the tokenomics is that they there do not seem to be any um, team tokens allocated 80 okay. five, 85 percent of the tokens are going to incentives and the, oh no, I mean, 85% of the tokens are going to the community and 15% is put aside for uh, yield farming incentives. So what they're basically saying is that, you know, the whole token will go to the community. Obviously, we don't know if they are maybe lying about this. There could be some stuff going on in the background where they are part of the community and also <laughs> get an allocation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that's something I will be researching myself to to see how open they are about that. But overall, their tokenomics are quite good. You know, there's no like private investors involved, so that makes it uh, interesting to me. And they will be sharing revenue with um, stake. You know, people who stake the token. Yeah, that that's cool. Now let's quickly run through Tina and CowSwap. Are they cool. leveraging intent? Yeah, so I would say CowSwap is the OG decentralized exchange that as one of the first started adopting intents. They also are one of the biggest DEX aggregators. So one of their main things they do is essentially making sure that if you want to buy ETH, they make both sure that you do not get um, hit by MEV. It's a bit hard yeah. to explain, but they make sure like that you do not lose money because someone front runs front your run, transaction. Yeah. And they also try to get you the best price using those solvers that uh, I mentioned. They have been expanding a lot. They're also working on um, some other infrastructure these days. So to me, it's like one of the OG projects. And that's why I put it on the list because they were the first adopter. 
they were one of the first to do it. And I think they will benefit a lot from like the narrative taking off. Another thing is that they uh, are potentially looking to change their tokenomics. So they have already um, implement. Oh, I'm getting messages from Sid. Wait a second. So they have, um, they are potentially looking to change their tokenomics and share revenue with token holders. And they've already actually uh, posted a governance proposal to charge fees to start earning revenue. And to okay. me, this is a medium risk opportunity because the protocol has existed for a long time. Yeah. The token is live. We already know everything about the tokenomics and the supply. And for me, the reward is still quite high because they're at a low market cap. I, I think around 30 or $40 million. So it's also not like a large cap token, you know? Yeah. So, so I would say if you were to pick like the most promising um, play in intent today, that would be CowSwap because even though the token revamp isn't quite certain, they check most of the boxes. They have existing traction. They have a technical agent being one of the first movers. They already in have users space. too. Yeah, yeah they, already, they already have users and they have a sensi sensible part uh, to creating token value for users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. They're medium risk with high reward in my opinion. Okay, let's go. So now, intent is an imaging narrative, and I think we can start bringing the conversation in the home. Uh, so, I mean, we're entering a new bull run. Maybe Bitcoin goes 3x, 5x. But if you're looking for the next 50, 100x, it has to be something like an emerging player or maybe an existing player that does something revolutionary in that sense Agreed. of the world. And we are saying intent could be one of those sectors where we see those players that deliver like those impressive supersonic growth. But what, what, what are the criteria? How do you, how do you determine that this narrative, um, it's a, as an upward trajectory and could deliver exponential returns during the next bull market? Yeah. So I think what's really important uh, with narratives is that they have a compelling story. You know, that's the first thing to look at. Like, okay, is there a story here? That is first like believable. Like if I tell you about intent, is that something you believe in? Is that something you see something in? You know, does it like, you know, get your brain going? Because mm -hmm. that's how things get traction. Because you want people to tell the story again to other people about yeah. it. It has to flow. But having a story is not enough. You know, there also need to be an actual fundamental catalyst. Yep. Because we have seen with other narratives that were, you know, like meme coins, that once the story becomes less interesting and people find out that there is no fundamental reason to believe in it, it crashes down. And mm -hmm. that's what I like about Intense. It is both a compelling story, but there's also actual te technological innovation happening. It's yep. not just a story. And obviously what's important is that you see adoption. So one thing I looked at in the article is people adopting intents, using the word intents in their uh, marketing, you know, all those things indicate that people are starting to believe that this is like a big narrative and a big thing to focus on. Yeah. Because you could just call your application a DEX, but what we're seeing now is people are launching as intent based DEXs, you know, <laughs> they want to show to people, yeah. just like with AI. AI is like a very similar type of narrative where now every company needs to tell their investors that they're using AI in yeah. their platform, you know? It's like Uber, but with AI. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that. Exactly. And that's kind of what I see with Intense as well, that it's going to become like a buzzword and people want to own a piece of it. Yeah. So a lot of these fund managers, they'll go to their analysts and say like, Hey, I'm reading about Intense. Invest in any company that is using this, you know. Okay, that that that's that's very helpful to know, and I think it, it really just makes it clear. And users can, you know, our readers can look at it by themselves, do like sentiment analysis, and say like, okay, is the narrative mm -hmm. really there? Are people talking about it? And then decide yeah, I think, if this uh, could... Twitter is like a good indicator because what I've noticed is usually people start talking about something on Twitter first. And then later prices catch up. Yeah. And then when people start talking about the prices, then you should exit. So people <laughs> talking about the product is not bad. It starts becoming a bit bad when they start when talking, they start about, talking the about the prices. 
Yes. That's that's actually a very smart way to, to think about it. I think um, we could bring this home um, unless you have something else you want to share. Like you have any final, final words to share about this? Obviously, uh, you get the most value by reading the reports uh, as, as we've discussed. It's, I mean, you can listen to this conversation as you've done, but you will most likely get the most value if you go on and read the reports. It's on the uh, website yeah. as well. But do you want to share I anything else with our viewers, Stan? Uh, yeah, so the last thing is just so people know, I personally have not invested in any of the projects mentioned yet. Like, I'm actively looking into all of them. And if we do invest in one of the projects mentioned, you can expect like a deep dive on this project. Because I think that's very important for people to know, you know, like, hey, we're currently just writing about this so you can do your own research. But if I end up investing in any of these projects, there will be a deep dive just on CowSwap or just on Simeo. Yeah. And I think that's just important to know for the audience, just for transparency. And obviously nothing here is financial advice and do your own research. Absolutely. So there is no clear path to making money from intent yet, but as soon as we find a clear path to making money on this, you'll be the first to hear about it from us. That's what Stan is saying um do your own research obviously um i think we've just really scratched the surface of what intent could be and i think the the biggest takeaway for me is that the from here on uh intents will drive new opportunities and those opportunities will grow as intents begin to open the door to new categories of applications that we can't even begin to imagine in web3 and i think there is the possibility that intents will also make crypto apps become more commonplace, more intuitive, mm -hmm. like regular TradFi apps. And I think that could be one of the reasons that intent is a game changer for DeFi. Agreed. And yeah, I think we're just getting started with this whole narrative. So there's still time, you know, and probably a lot more new projects will start popping up. So we'll keep you guys yeah. updated on anything in this uh, sector. Thank you. It's always a pleasure talking with you, Stan. Um, thank you for taking the time to explain this new report to our readers. And I hope you have a wonderful day ahead. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining in.